Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. This is episode number 586. And this week, we have got uh, an Amazon Echo Dot 3rd Gen. Mm -hmm. It's really a complicated name. And we've got a Google Home Mini. And these two devices are smart home devices that allow us to do things like turn on and off lights and adjust our thermostat. <laughs> and also just be able to tap into resources like finding the weather forecast just by asking a question of our devices. But the question becomes for us because they're the same price virtually and the same form factor which one is going to be best for me which one should i look at and uh, so tonight we set out to unbiased uh provide an unbiased review for you so that uh, you can make that decision based on the questions that we're going to ask so i think we're going to have a lot of fun tonight oh I'm yeah to it so hey stick around we'll be right back this is category five technology tv our live recordings are trusted only to solid state drives by Kingston Technology. Revive your computer with improved performance and reliability over traditional hard drives with Kingston SSDs. Category 5 TV streams live with Telestream Wirecast and Nimble Streamer. Tune in every week on Roku, Kodi, Plex, and other HLS video players. For local showtimes, visit Category5.tv. Category5.tv is a member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Cat5.tv slash TPN and the International Association of Internet Broadcasters, cat5.tv slash IAIB. And scene. With that, we throw away the scripts. The Perfect. rest of the show is completely unscripted. I need that script. It's nice to have you here. How is everybody doing? Good. Good. I'm tired. I'm oh, phew. Good. <laughs> She's like, I don't have my script. How I don't know you? what to say. How am I? I'm good. I'm good. I'm I good. am good. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Yes. Nice to see you, everybody. Uh, tonight, we're going to be talking with, um, we've got a couple of interviews tonight, and we're really excited about this. Big, big names. Yeah, huge. We're going to be talking with uh, a little miss from, a, uh, I can't say it just yet. We have a representative from said Google. Amazon Echo Dot yes. is here to join us tonight. <laughs> We've also got Google Home Mini here with us tonight. We're going to be speaking with her. And uh, we're going to be learning, uh, we're going to finally be putting to rest the question, because we all have this question, which one is better? Right. Which one's going to be the one that does what I need it to do? Jeff, hold your tongue, man. <laughs> hold your tongue. <laughs> ah! That's right. And some of us may be like entirely against the, the automated home. But Go! for those of us who are Pick interested me! in the technology, um, tonight we're going to be talking with both of them and seeing how each one responds to us and how they react. So that's going to be a lot of fun. What have you been up to this week? This week, homework. Nothing but homework. Just work. Pretty like much work. And work and homework. Any tech stuff? Well, I'm learning how to use Google Slides. Google Slides. So this is their presentations, a.k.a. PowerPoint for Google Drive. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I spent a lot of time learning how to put audio on each slide. Isn't that cool? It's so cool. So yeah. that you don't have to actually speak when you're presenting a presentation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're okay. Define. So you Explain. just record your voice. You re oh, and so you attach it to the so file. So you script yourself. You record it. Right. With your computer mic or whatever. Yeah, and then you just click to the next slide, and then the next thing happens. Yeah. The problem oh. is, I found out there is a problem. If you're working in a, a group of people, uh, yes. you have to be on your Google Drive. The gr Google Drive, like the main one. So the one that created the slides. Why not yes. put it on a shared drive? You can't. You can't put audio onto... Like, it all ha like I can't have anybody else part of it. Did you try turning it. it off and on again? I did. That seems like a it glaring feature is it issue. A, is it a permissions issue? Because I know if I share our Google Drive folder mm -hmm. for the weekly show notes for the for this show, and if I forget to put Jeff on the on the um, viewable list, right? He so doesn't he show can up. Access it, then he can't see it. Right. So it, to him, from his perspective, he doesn't see this week's episode. Right. right. He just sees the previous weeks. Mm -hmm. I have to remember to add Jeff to that. Could right. it be something like that? Like I maybe, hope so. Maybe it's a permissions thing. Maybe. Because it seems like Google's really got the whole concept of right. collaborative work. I would think that would be a glaring feature issue. Mm -hmm. If they didn't allow it. Yeah, I had to agree internet, to a lot of permissions. Would be an uproar. I know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know how many people are doing <laughs> a presentation not, on anemia I was this say, week. Maybe but not a lot of people have tried to record themselves and stick it to a file and then share it with people. That's kind of cool, though. It is. That's really cool. It is neat. It's better for like I don't mind. I don't mind speaking or in front of people. I don't mind presenting anything pretty you don't much. Say. But I do work amongst people who don't do like 
an amazing show every week, and so they're nervous. So I said, oh, I've got a great idea. Let's just record your voice, and then I'll get up there, and I'll, like, go yeah. through the slides, and your voices will be on there. We tried it, and it didn't work. Oh, oh dear. So now they're forced to be do up you, with me what, at the front of the class. Do you find that the, the education sector and, and the college system is transitioning toward use of these technologies so that oh, someone like yourself oh, yeah. who is experienced working in a studio environment mm -hmm. all of a sudden has an advantage over other students because you're presenting every single week here's the thing i am legit the genius in the class when it comes oh, yeah? to tech really yes. fantastic very good i yes don't react like that jeff come on no, no, no. that was genuine astonishment it, i don't it, no it, truly <laughs> it was i mean the amount of tech out there the fact that I would have thought there would be a, more people embracing the Google Drive and all that kind of stuff. You would have thought more people would be in, right. know that kind of stuff. It's incredible. It's still pretty new, though. It is pretty new. No, and you have to speaking. remember the course that I'm in, the demographics are generally like women my age. And I think 25? that... Right. Nicely played, sir. <laughs> nice. Nicely played. <laughs> Uh, I think the whole STEM, you know, the, with women sure. is still growing, okay. right? Oh, for sure. So, Do you think it's a, a gender gap? Perhaps. Are the men in the group there more are, attuned to the, the technology? Well, there aren't any. Oh, it's an all-female oh, okay. class. Yeah, so... Oh. So it's hard to, hard from, to make that... Uh, yeah, so there's not, not like not a, a control, control but... That's, that's a tough thing to... But I, I do know that I've never been... Hmm the smartest at tech in the room until to now. To be fair, you do hang out with a lot of geeks. That's true. It's, I have access so to genius. It's it's tough to to gauge that when you spend you know, when your friends are basically nerds and That's true. geeks. Not that all your friends are. No, pretty I've much just it. most of your other friends. <laughs> huh. Jeff, there are still people who buy Microsoft Office. Yes. There it's are true. still people who spend hundreds of dollars in order to get the ability We're to do word processing and spreadsheets. That exactly. They would do that. So you say, like, well, people are not familiar with Google Drive. Well, no. There are still, there's still that. I just, I, I think I we're seeing a transition, my, though. But I shake my head because I'm like, it's, it's out there so blatantly obvious that mm. how, like, I don't know how people still do it. I'm just like, ugh. I think people ugh. still get caught up in the whole... And Sasha, you can, you can relate to this. Oh, well, I've got all my files in doc format, mm -hmm. and I'm afraid that if I transition, I'm not going to be able to open them. But then you upload a docx file to Google Drive, right. and boom, it's converted, and it works in Drive. Yes. So there's really no, you know, when you, you, when you factor yeah. that in, it's like, wow, you can, you can really make that transition now. Yep. I think that's the way the technology's gone and going but i think microsoft's starting to feel that we're we're learning that this week with the changes in their browser you mean some the new blue screen of death no i'm talking about <laughs> edge yeah oh, had, the edge we oh. had to talk about microsoft um edge just last week about how yes. you know why why do they still hold on to that mindset we actually had that discussion and the very next day they announced that they're switching to chromium yes mm -hmm. and and this after trying so hard to convince people that Edge is better than Chrome. So right. what you're saying really they, is that they watched the show and they realized exactly that's how it, it. felt. That, yeah. Yes. yeah, they just realized that <laughs> if they nicely the done five, five, we would team. give them better advice on how to run their business. But it also shows, yeah, that would be nice, <laughs> but it shows that they're finally cluing in that yes. we can't pretend that this is 1985 anymore. Mm -hmm. We can't pretend that this is the early 90s and we own the market. Yeah. That's not where we're at right Welcome now. Welcome to reality. Yeah. So, so, yeah, it's a transition for the users, a transition for the companies who manufacture the software. Oh, my gosh, it is. Big time. Yep. Big time. What have you been up to in tech? Uh, what have I, You've been sure. busy. I, I've been very so busy. how do you like, find time I, for Well, oddly enough, tech? I had a meeting uh, last Thursday. Okay. So like the day after Cat Five, mm -hmm. and uh, hanging out with some uh, colleagues from the other side of the boardroom table, and they're like, "Hey, let's go out for lunch." You know, our, kind of our last meeting before you know the holiday season. So we're like, "Okay," and uh, while we're out for lunch, somehow the conversation ended up on cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. Oh. And with people who know nothing about anything tech, they're basically like, I have the power button on my computer, and that's as far as it goes. Sure. So I'm talking to them about cryptocurrency. I'm talking to them about the blockchain, 
and they're like glazed over look and then I pulled out yeah and then when we're you know, you can mine on single board computers, and we just did an analysis <laughs> analysis with the giggle score, and they're like, "What?" And I was like, "Yes, real time giggle score conversation in real life." <laughs> it was amazing. Already made it into real life conversations. It's I can't uh-huh. Yeah, it was it was great. And the best part was at the end of sup, uh, lunch. Sorry, the one guy is just like glazed over. He's like, "I have no clue how you know any of that stuff." I'm like, "Well, it's osmosis, really." But the other person at the table, she's like, okay, this is amazing. I need to go buy one of those little mini computer things mm. so it can make me cryptocurrency. Right. I'm like, it, well, it's, like it's that, more eh? than just that. You can't just buy the SBC. <laughs> she's like, okay, well, oh, who, who in can a I... world of ASICs, <laughs> in a world of ASICs, you're going to go with a Raspberry Pi Zero <laughs> as your crypto mining platform. I know. But she's like, so oh, if I, but if I you're going to be disappointed. The, the best part was she's like, so if I buy one of those little like credit card computers, and I just like let it you know do its math scores. <laughs> oh my then, gosh! Then I can make money. I'm like, <laughs> after a year, yeah. you might have ten, you might have ten thousand turtle coin. <laughs> exactly. And Which with is like that one ten thousand turtle coin, oh, no satoshi. satoshi. <laughs> Quit <laughs> making it a swear word, Sasha. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what's been up with me in tech is talking to people who deal in contracts about tech and they're just like, whoosh. Okay. So, yeah, people are interested in the tech. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was really neat. Yeah. It was really neat. And then uh, I, I was mentioning the interview we had ooh, almost a year ago uh, with blockchain. Mm-hmm. And I mentioned We've the whole few, idea yeah. about uh, pa- the, the question I raised about passports. And then they kind of got the concept of how it's all linked and we started talking about the romaine lettuce recall oh, from a yeah. month ago oh. and i'm like if it was on the blockchain we'd be able to know exactly where it came from mm-hmm. and they're going oh this is a really cool idea and then this organization they also deal in logistics and i'm mm-hmm. like you know if you guys got blockchain built into your technology you'd be able to like from purchase right through the logistics fil- s- facility to the store shelf mm-hmm. be able to tell where all your products are and how who's been involved in like oh that's interesting we're gonna have to look into this for our business i'm like there you go <gasps> you're changing yeah. the world i know it was fun make it happen jeff make it happen make single-handedly it so. jeff has brought the blockchain to canada <laughs> <laughs> Right. <laughs> Not a true story. Yeah. <sighs> it is cool to think about how the blockchain could prevent those kinds of mm-hmm. happenstances. So understand, when there's a product recall, food in particular, mm-hmm. they don't know where the infected food came from. Yeah, they can generally get it down to the region. Yeah, but, but that's still I mean, broad. it all just gets dumped onto a truck and then gets dumped into a factory warehouse and then gets shipped out and gets warehoused and then gets distributed to the stores. So maybe they can narrow it down to that warehouse that distributed it to those stores. Mm-hmm. Yep. But how do they know that it's not also from further down the line? So now, okay, well, it may affect other stores even though they haven't had any issues. So we just have to pull all the romaine lettuce. Right. So farmers are hurting. Easy. Right? Farmers are hurting. Um, the whole industry is hurting. People along those chains. So from the farm all the way to... Um, the dinner to table. The, really? Yes. Well, yeah, I mean, not to sound too cliche, but all the way up to the store, the entire supply chain is affected by those types of recalls. Yeah. And I, not only that, but the amount of waste. Oh, I suspect... Think about this. Okay, so here's what I think. I think if blockchain could be used, that I bet you we would find that a contamination like that probably isn't entirely field-wide. I bet you oh, if sure. you... Right? So it's only in a portion probably. So even the waste from the actual f- farm that's Maybe the contaminated... Maybe very minor. Yeah. 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 Like everything could save money right along the line. But it's about oh, investing yeah. in the technology to make it happen, though. And, yeah. and that is, I mean, even just in the, like, the vegetable industry, to get that in one product. Like, it's a good example. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I mean, that would be like massive infrastructure mm-hmm. right. to, and, and mind shift to make it happen. But to think of all the positivity that could come as a result of it, it's right. like, mm-hmm. man, I love it. So think about it, like, say at the farm where romaine lettuce is being farmed, Far- yeah. grown. Yeah. Do you call it Grown, farming? Picked, farming. Yeah. Distributed. It'll be like it'll a. Be it'll be cultivated. A, there you go. That sounds about right <laughs> with my very limited knowledge of farming. <laughs> um, so imagine that there's a, a, an individual yes. with some kind of ailment that they have now 
introduced into that supply chain. <laughs> I've learned about set ailments. I know which one it I'm just saying, lives. okay, yes. so imagine, so now this supply, so yeah. I don't know, 10 crates of romaine lettuce now has gone out to the supply chain. Mm -hmm. Right. Because of those 10 crates of, of lettuce that are contaminated, now somebody gets sick. Yeah. And they have to now pull all of the romaine lettuce from the entire country. Wrong. All the lettuce in the entire country. Ridiculous. Now, think about if the blockchain can now say, oh, no, this was just that one pr worker mm -hmm. and these 10 crates, and we can pull those 10 crates. That's all. Yep. Think about the amount of food that now is being recalled that can now, let's just put that into perspective. What if we could take that food that was recalled and, and give that to a third world or to hungry people? Right. And just imagine how much good food that is that is basically just being exactly. burned because they can't do anything with it because they don't know where the contamination took place. This, yeah. I, the, using the blockchain is a great way technology can help to save the world. Mm -hmm. oh, really. Sure. Absolutely. So. Anyway. Mm -hmm. We're not here to talk about food. <laughs> but the blockchain, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about. Exactly. Yeah. And, and so, we're all learning at the same time. We're all learning together because this is a, an evolving technology. And it's something it that is. we're seeing um, companies like Walmart and Intel investing in the technology to make this happen. And if Walmart can bring that in, then all of a sudden the value of the blockchain also goes up. And yep. we start to see a value increase in the cryptocurrency market as well. Because mm -hmm. it's all part of the same kind of infrastructure of that blockchain. So, um, so it's interesting how everything kind of plays into one another in this very strange, evolving technological world that we live in. So in a completely self-serving thought process, if last week we mentioned the whole Microsoft issue and Edge and suddenly the next day they switch and then, mm -hmm. you know, say a year and a half from now, suddenly we see some blockchain and some produce, can we say it, you know, half yes. a year at Cat5? We can't because it was a news story and Sasha unveiled it. Well, we could just forget about that part and oh, say yes. that we're changing the world. You heard it here. <laughs> you heard it here. So give us a thumbs up. Give us a subscribe on YouTube, all that kind of stuff. You know how that works. Yeah. Oh, Technology-wise, for me this week, because I know that was the question that you were oh, yes, yes. about to ask. <laughs> of course. Well, here's the thing. You, you're everything tech. Like, I'm, you're part cyborg. You're all tech. So. I'm kind of, I've got my hands in so many different things. I'm loving the single board computers. I'm loving that portable, like, very micro and learning and, and trying to become a maker and learning to solder and things like that. Mm -hmm. Being able to program a single board computer, even an Arduino, to do some cool stuff. It's a lot of fun for me. Sure. But I'm stepping back. You know, Christmas is coming. Okay. There's not a lot of time to mess around with that kind of thing. Mm hmm So tonight we're looking at the smart home. Devices that you can yes. purchase that are ready to rock out the door. Mm hmm We're going to do things like, okay, Google, turn on the light. Sure, turning on the light. We're going to say, Alexa, turn off the light. Okay. And that is cool to me. We're going to learn all about it tonight on Category 5 Technology TV. We've got to take a quick break, though. Stick around. We'll be right back. Whether you shop on ThinkGeek, GearBest, B&H Photo Video, eBay, or Amazon, or even if you want a free trial of Audible, You'll find the best deals and support the shows we produce by simply visiting the shopping sites you already frequent by using the links on our website. Visit Category5.tv slash partners for the full and ever-growing list and help us create more free content like this show. Thank you for shopping with our partners and thank you for watching. All right, welcome back. We're going to get straight into it. We've got an Amazon Echo Dot third generation. We've got a Google Home Mini. They're about the same price. Okay. As you can see, they're roughly, let's see if I can get in here, if I can click the right buttons. They're roughly the same form factor. Mm -hmm. So they look about the same. About the same color, too. Yeah, yeah. They're And stylistically, they're pretty similar. There are some differences. 
before we get into the review, before we start actually testing these devices, which are smart home devices, if you're not familiar with them, we're going to be showing you how they work in just a couple of moments' time. Uh, I actually filmed as I unboxed these. So let's get in there and let's take a look at the boxes. That's what they look like. And uh, okay, I've got the Google Home Mini I'm going to set aside and let's get into the box for the Echo Dot. Um, this is the third generation, as I mentioned there. So this is the current one in 2018 at the end of the year. So this is what you're going to be picking up if you, uh, if you get one of these for, for a Christmas gift or something like that. Nicely packaged. You can see that a lot of detail has gone into the packaging and it's not loose within that box. It's really, really, um, it's, it's well formed to the box. Looking at this, first of all, the one thing that I notice is that there are a lot of buttons on top. You've got the four buttons here. Um, we don't have that, at least not visible on the, uh, on the Google device. Spinning around, I've got power here, and I've also got, interestingly enough, what looks like a headphone jack or an audio output. So I can actually connect this to a bigger speaker system if I want. And I've also got uh, the ability to use headphones with it. So I have tested this as a podcast broadcasting tool. So I plug my headphones in and listen to a podcast from the Echo Dot and it works just fine. It's got the basic manuals as you'd imagine. But you notice that with these devices, they're very, um, they're very um, limited as far as their manuals go. Because mm -hmm. there's not a lot to learn. They're self-explanatory, presumably. And we've got a power brick there, which is a, uh, a barrel connector into the Amazon Echo Dot. Nice. Okay. Hmm. So let's, uh, let's pull out the, uh, the Google device. So this is, um, that's the Amazon Echo Dot third gen. And I've also got the Google Home Mini, um, which is, again, current as Sorry, of... Sorry, I'm not sure about that. Oh, <laughs> Alexa giving us a hard time. Uh, Alexa, cancel. Um, the Google Home Mini is, uh, this is what is current at the end of 2018 as well. So these were both ordered the same day. And uh, there it is. So similar kind of form factor. But you notice now this one, the speaker is on the top. Mm -hmm. It's not wrapped around as you see with the Amazon Echo Dot uh, 3. Input-wise, there's literally nothing. No um, buttons. There's no buttons that you can feel. Now, I have discovered that there are volume buttons on the side, but they're basically like a touch sensor. Um, then we've got the power input, which is USB mini, and we've got a switch to turn on and off its ability to listen to me. So I always thought when I saw this, okay, well, this one's got the physical switch. doesn't look like really anything else. But because it has a physical switch, I thought that's going to be the one because I can, I can mute it. I can make it so it, it's not a privacy concern. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about that in a few moments. Again, we've got very basic manuals because presumably they're going to talk back to you and they're going to teach you how to set them up and they're going to walk you through the steps pretty simply. Um, we are at that point in technology, which I love. Pretty cool stuff. And then we've got a USB-C or a USB uh, micro, USB yeah micro connector, and it's got its own power there. Perfect. Other than that, anything else in the box? That mm -hmm. is everything in the box. So nice and simple, nice and sleek. That's all it comes with, folks. So those are the two devices on your left is the, uh, the Google Home Mini, and on the right is the Amazon Echo Dot, and it's the third generation. There you have it. <gasps> All right, so let's, uh, let's actually get a look at these live in real time um, on, the, uh, on the desk here. There they are. So I mentioned with the Google uh, Mini, it has a physical tactile switch, which will actually turn off the microphone. And if I flip that... The mic's off. It'll actually tell me that the mic is off and it's gone red and now it's not able to hear me. So if I say, okay, Google, okay, Google, it doesn't respond. And before I start doing this, and I apologize because I, okay, mic is on. Um, please, if you use these devices at home, mute them right now, okay? Because we are going to be going through this demonstration. We're going to be calling on these devices. I don't want to be setting off your devices. <laughs> and how's, we will how's this be setting off. The world going nuts? Yes. Yeah, I know. And I it's know that's going to happen. It actually happened um, just during the break there. Somebody mentioned that, uh, that we turned off their lights, and I apologize <laughs> for that. Um, but that's going to happen. Also, an important note that we have not subscribed to any of their extra services. Okay. okay. Amazon Music, Google Music, we have not subscribed to those things because I want to 
feel what it's like as a new user out of the box. Right. What is it like to actually use this device? So mm -hmm. we may get rejected by some of the requests that we make because we don't have those subscriptions. But at the same time, I want to show you what you're going to get out of the box without having to pay extra no right. subscription fees. Now, that said, we do have an Amazon account. Okay, obviously I use Amazon and with yeah. that I do have Prime. Okay. Right. Oh. I also have a G Suite account because I use uh, Gmail as my email provider. Yep. Uh, so between the two providers, those are the services that I do pay for each month. Mm -hmm. And that's it. So we haven't so subscribed to anything extra. If you get the Google-based device and you don't have a G Suite, does that impact the services you can get from the device? I, uh, honestly, I don't know, Jeff. I, okay. d I don't think that there's anything really tapped into it other than it's, okay. it taps into my Gmail and everything like that if I want to give it permission to do so. Uh, uh, but, um, but this is really just, I want to be transparent with the viewers so that you understand what, mm -hmm. what I have, what I've right. done. And, I, and, and some people will do a review of these devices and they'll set up all the accounts and they'll pay for the extra additionals and they'll show you all the wonderful features. I don't right. want to do that. This is a, a, an out of the basic. box. This is, if you bought this for mom or dad, what are they going to experience? They're right. not going to want to set up a subscription, basically. Right. And exactly. maybe they will, but out, out of the box, what's the experience going to be like? That's where this review is at. Okay out of the box and user experience. Um, in addition to that, I should mention that we are partnered with Amazon. So while I'd love you to buy the Amazon device, uh, because we do get a cut if you use our link, I'm just getting full disclosure, right? Um, the, the review itself is completely unbiased. Um, mm -hmm. I want you to be able to see both devices. We're gonna, we're gonna ask them the same questions. We're gonna allow them to react. And I want you to be able to uh, make a decision based on your own use, uh, what's gonna work best for you. Mm -hmm. so, um, so yes, we are partnered with Amazon. I'd love you to buy them. We're not partnered with Google, but, um, but you'll notice through the course of this uh, review that we're not allowing that to skew our, our judgments at all of the devices. Um, Again, please turn off the microphones on your devices um, so that we don't set them off. If you've got a phone that uses um, the Google Assistant, make sure you turn that off just for the moment um, and, because we don't want to be ordering things for you. Yep. All right, so back into it. Let's get in here. Uh, okay, so we've got a tactile switch on the uh, Google Home Mini. And, and I thought that the Amazon Echo uh, Dot didn't have such a thing because it, it doesn't really boast of it. And this really shows it off. Like that's the only tactile thing that it has. The only thing that you see on the Google Home is a switch to turn off its ability to listen to you. So I thought in my naivety that, well, that's the device for me because we want to be able to turn off that because we're concerned about security and privacy. Uh, right. We want to be able to turn that off. Yes. Well, what I didn't realize is that the Amazon Echo Dot also has this. So if I push that button there, oh. now the speaker is off. So Alexa, Alexa, completely unresponsive. It's not listening to me right now. The microphone is in fact muted. Mm -hmm. So if mm -hmm. I unmute that, Alexa, and now it's waiting for my command. Alexa, cancel. All right, Announcing. so Alexa, cancel. I think I just called home. <laughs> 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 All right, so a couple of um, things that I've learned. So I've had this since Sunday. So right. it's been three days now since I've had these two devices. Yep. And I've given them both a fair chance and given them a fair test against one another. And the one thing that I'll say for you parents of young children, I thought that these switches to turn off the microphone f were for privacy. I honestly thought that. I yeah. thought, because my wife and I have private conversations, we talk about finances and whatever else, yes. and our romantic things, and we don't want Google listening, we don't want Amazon listening, so that's what those switches are for. What I found out is that those switches are in fact so that when you're listening to Christmas music and your kids come in and they tell Alexa to fart, Alexa, fart. <laughs> it's Luke's up all over. That's what those switches are for. Right. I so. had, in, in <laughs> one evening, our first evening of having it, I had Christmas music so playing many. for the kids. Oh, yeah. And they set it up so that the Amazon Echo Dot would 
send them a reminder every 15 minutes to fart. <laughs> <laughs> so just a warning for you okay. parents, that's, oh. that's bound to happen. So, that's that's so happen you can with my kids. start the music playing and then turn the microphone off? You sure can. <gasps> Absolutely. That is genius. Yeah. So that's, Smart that's what move. I want to do. You can do yes. that with both devices. Okay. Okay, okay so we're going to give these uh, two a fair shot. So we've got Alexa, tell me a joke. Jimmy Fallon, take it away. What is a horse's favorite band? Stalin Oats. <laughs> okay, all right. Well done. Uh, okay, Google, tell me a joke. Why is Peter Pan always flying? Because he can never, never land. Huh? <laughs> why is Peter Pan always flying? Because he can never, never land. <laughs> and, and why? Okay, so good. So we got it twice. twice. We got it twice. <laughs> all right, so they both told me a joke. <laughs> Neither was over the top. Uh, no. Uh, okay, Google. Fart. The kids love this. Oh, one. okay. Okay, Google didn't do it. Maybe it was silent but violent. Now I do that because my kids. Well, that's a disappointment. To I report know. a problem, you can send feedback. <laughs> <laughs> I like to report that my device doesn't <laughs> fart. It doesn't. <laughs> But the kids, for some reason, that's the first thing that they experimented with. Now, my wife and I were having a discussion in the kitchen, where, and, and I made, you'll, you'll maybe appreciate this. So I used coconut milk oh, to good. make a, a uh, uh, not a creme brulee, uh, uh, custard. Okay. And said, oh, we should make creme brulee. Right. Now that I've made a, a vegan alternative to coconut milk. It was with, um, with cornstarch instead of egg, and, and right. I, I pulled it off. It actually was really, really good. Excellent. And my wife said to me, well, is that all creme brulee is, is custard? Mm -hmm. And I said, Alexa, is creme brulee made of custard? Here's something I found on Wikipedia. Creme brulee, also known as burnt cream or trinity cream, is a dessert consisting of a rich custard base topped with a texturally contrasting layer of hardened caramelized sugar. Mm. So delicious. Okay, Google. Is creme brulee made of custard? On the website thespreceipts.com, they say, creme brulee, the simple and elegant custard. Creme brulee is a classic French dessert consisting of a custard topped with caramelized sugar. Very nice. So Very nice. So, so both different of these search were, results. Yes. Basic, yeah, same, same result, different verbiage. Okay. But they mm -hmm. both worked. Um, they both answered my question, which is important to me. I want to be able to ask questions and that's exactly. part of the idea beh right. behind having an assistant now if you use either of these on your phone what i have noticed is that these are way faster the response time is instantaneous is mm -hmm. that because it's using your cell phone data well on my phone it's slow on my phone if i ask a question if i ask these same questions they're delayed in order to give me that oh, answer mm -hmm. gotcha okay with either of these devices especially honestly the google seems to be really zippy um they are very quick to answer the question right. so when i ask a question it's instantly there it knows the answer it's not waiting my phone on the other hand using the same like uh google assistant for example it seems to have a bit of a delay okay one of the so now okay well what use is that that's cool that's really neat and everything but we want to be able to do things like okay google turn on the light sure and, turning the light on and that to me starts to take this into the next level so okay, okay google google I, and i do find that a to get you that information cancel. i'll need your permission you okay can google give it to me in the google cancel it gets confused sometimes if you yes. start talking and and you've already said the keyword and I do find OK Google is a bit of a tongue twister. Just right. it again. Close the light. Uh, turn off the light. Sorry, I'm not sure how to help with that. But That's I'm my still fault, learning. not yours. OK Google, Google, turn off the light. You got it. Kay. Turning off the light. Do you find that a tongue twister a little bit? Mm -hmm. No. No? OK. I, I kind of do. Uh, Alexa, turn on the light. OK. Not a tongue twister at all. I don't get tongue tied on that. Do you want to try? I have a question, actually. Okay. Can you turn down the volume of the response? Because, okay, the time I would want to turn off the light is if I was sleepy. So, Alexa, volume one. Alexa, turn off the light. Okay. Beautiful. Thank you. Alexa, volume seven. Okay, Google, volume seven. Alexa, turn on the light. Okay. Okay, Google, turn off the light. 
You got it. Turning off the light. Now you notice that we have a light bulb there and it's just connected to a smart device here, which is just a power bar. Yep. So this is a Wi-Fi connected power bar, which costs me no more than normal power bar. And yet it has connectivity to these devices through wireless. So I can have that anywhere. And all four of those power outlets plus the USB can be controlled by voice via either of these devices. And that's why I can say, okay, Google, turn on the light. Okay, turning on the light. But then I can also say, Alexa, turn off the light. Okay. So they play nicely together. They interact together. They do. The, what I don't like, though, is that with the Google device, it keeps repeating what I've told it to do. I, that's why I like... Sometimes in the verbiage? Yeah. I've sensed that sometimes. That's well, why I like the... Okay. I don't want to give our opinion too much. That's my. I opinion. want you to make your opinion. Mm -hmm. So, but keep that in mind. Listen for that. Uh, I think that's fair. Um, now we can't play ro like music here on the review because then we're going to demonetize on YouTube. But I do want to show you how easy it is to request certain genres of music. So here it is. It's um, December 11th when we're shooting this. So I would say, okay, Google, play some Christmas music. All right. Here's a Google Play music station called Smooth R&B Christmas. Okay, okay, so it works. And I can say, okay Google, skip this song. Like every year oh, well this sounds cool. Okay Google, what singer is this? This is Real Love This Christmas by Kenny Lattimore. Okay Google, stop the music. Which is pretty cool when you're listening yeah. to music and you can just ask it what it what? is that's playing because quite often on the regular radio you don't necessarily catch who it is yeah. Alexa play me some Christmas music the station holiday favorites on Amazon music do you notice how I can just use regular verbiage yeah, yeah. Alexa skip this song and I like that that I can just talk to these devices as if they're in the room and just doing my bidding Alexa stop the music and Alexa will do, will do the same response, I should say. Alexa, play me some Christmas music. Alexa, play some Christmas music. The station holiday favorites on Amazon Music. I want this to be fair one-to-one. -one. Alexa, what singer is this? This is Michael Bublé. Okay. Alexa, what CD is this from? Cedric Donald Atkins was a researcher for the United States Department of Agriculture. <laughs> Completely off. Did that answer your question? No. But to be fair, I didn't ask that question of the OK <laughs> one over okay. here. Thanks All right, for Alexa. Feedback. All right, Alexa. Cancel. <laughs> All right. So it's able to tell me who the singer is. And once I get used to the commands of each individual exactly. device, because they're a little bit... Each one is a little bit different. Yes. Right. Um, but that does, it's able to look it up for me really, really quickly. Again, very, very quick. We're able to skip music on both devices. Fantastic. Perfect. Now we can get into some royalty-free music. And this is where I want to talk about the quality of the speakers. Okay. So I have personally found, and again, we don't want to get into personal my opinion too much, mm -hmm. but I do want to tell you through the experience over the past couple of days, and this has been reiterated by other staff in the office because I've had both of these devices playing Christmas music in my office. Oh, lovely. And this is, and I did not prompt them. They came to me and said they prefer the Alexa device <gasps> over, uh, pardon me, a uh, cancel. They prefer the Amazon Echo Dot over the Google Home Mini. Really? The Google Home Mini sounds like a good Bluetooth speaker. Mm -hmm. Right. Like what you would expect from a little Bluetooth speaker. Right. The Amazon Echo Dot third gen sounds like a really good full speaker. And, and it's pretty much the same form factor, but it does have a much fuller sound. And I, I hope that we can demonstrate that tonight. Certainly these two will be able to give their judgment. And right. I have a recorder in front here. So what you're going to hear is going to be from uh, right in front here from a good quality Zoom H4n. And it should be able to pick it up a little bit anyway so that you can get a bit of a judgment. So, okay, Google, play the fat rat. That artist is only available for Google Play Music subscribers. See that? But try this Google Play Music, the Fat Rat Station. Okay. Okay, Google. What song is this? This is Time Lapse by the Fat Rat. All right. Royalty free. Thank you, the Fat Rat. So it's okay. Not great news. No, there's no.
there's no bass. Okay, Google, set the volume to five. Yeah. Okay, Google, stop the music. That's kind of the impression that I got. It's nah, yeah. it's it's good. It's okay. It's like a Bluetooth speaker. You're right. It sounds like something you pick up for twenty bucks. From yeah. A Bluetooth spe- like and and to be fair, they're not expensive. Both no, of these devices right. are priced like similarly to one another. We're not going to talk about pricing, but it, they're not an expensive device, and and it does work as a Bluetooth speaker. But that's all it sounds like. It yeah. doesn't mm-hmm. sound exceptional. Alexa, play the Fat Rat. And this is just Shuffling getting it. songs by the Fat Rat this on Amazon from the Music. Cloud. Right. Alexa, what song is this? This is Unity from Unity by the Fat Rat. Again. Oh. Can you sense the difference? I am shocked to say yes. Usually I can't tell. This is great. Alexa, set the volume to five. Can you... Give instructions about the type of song, like, you know, can you find a song that's got a big bass sound? Is it not that advanced? Uh, we can, but it's not on the script tonight. Oh, you, okay. can, you can request certain genres, certain types of music, mm-hmm. but it's not going to be royalty free, okay. which we can't play. So here you go. Okay, so the bass is a little better on this one. It certainly has yeah. some bass to it. Yeah, you're right. I was feeling it right away. Yeah. Okay. It's not a subwoofer, but that said, yeah. either one of these devices will connect to a, a Bluetooth subwoofer. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Alexa devices, I said it, uh, the Amazon Echo will connect to their own proprietary, like they have a subwoofer yeah. for these for, devices. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Alexa, stop the music. So both of them were able to respond to that and do a great job of playing a request by artist name. Okay. 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 Uh, and I, I'm kind of bouncing around, but what's the range of picking up voice? The, um, the Google device, I find you do have to be pretty close to. Okay. Um, you can't have it across the room. It definitely won't pick you up if you're upstairs and calling down the stairs to mm-hmm. it. The Amazon Echo, on the other hand, I can be anywhere. And, really? And as long as, as long as I can pretty much hear you, it can hear me. Mm-hmm. And, so and can I head over that way? And do you want to give it a try? Yeah, I okay. do. Okay. So, okay. I don't know, do you want to go stand in the bathroom way over there, Jeff, and just do, 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 do. speak out and, and ask it to turn on the light? So, I'm way in, the, I'm like, what, a good 30 feet away at least? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Alexa, uh, play me something from Fat Rat. I can't find songs by Fat Rat. It's the Fat Rat, but turn on the light. Okay. Turn, okay, Alexa, turn on the light. Alexa, turn on the light. Okay. He's quite a ways over there. Now, can you try to have the Google device turn off the light? Okay, Google. Turn off the light. Sure. So turn they both the responded. Light. So that's, okay. that's, that's, that's all right. That's I just right. have a commanding voice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have found that the Amazon device has been more sensitive, and that's, that's been impressive. Um, okay, we're going to do a quick reminder. So... Alexa, remind me in five minutes to make coffee. Okay, I'll remind you in five minutes. Okay, Google, remind me in five minutes to make coffee. Sure, I'll remind you at 8.10 p.m. Okay, so keep in mind, now in five minutes, we're going to hear from both of these devices, which one is going to be the one that impresses us. Okay. All right. Um, Okay, Google, what's the forecast today? Tonight in Barrie, it's predicted to be minus two and cloudy. Alexa. Right now, it's oh. minus two and cloudy. <laughs> Alexa, what's the forecast today? Currently, in Barrie, it's minus one degrees Celsius with cloudy skies. Tonight, you can expect snow flurries with a low of minus three degrees. Both of them did really well mm-hmm. with that. But now, they gave different <laughs> results. <laughs> So which but one is the, it, it's weather? It's yeah. weather. No, I, I get that. But it <laughs> Somebody's it right. Where did they pull they it were, from? It was five seconds apart, and the weather changes here in Canada <laughs> so quickly. That much. I um, like it. I was going to barbecue, and I was. Uh, when is the sun going to go down? And I thought, hey, here's a question for. Okay, Google, what time is the sun going to go down in Barrie? The sun will set at 4:40 p.m. So I was like, okay, well, I got to get outside. It's getting late. Alexa, what time is the sun going to set in Barrie? 
Barry sunset will be 4.39 p.m. So, okay. Right. right. Again, we hear that the response from the Amazon device is very succinct, like I would answer a question. Right. It's not repeating back to me. Mm -hmm. the, you know. Yeah. The, the okay. All right. Let's do some simple math. Okay. Alexa, what's 5 times 32 divided by 2? The answer to your calculation is 80. Okay, Google. What's 5 times 32 divided by 2? Thinking. Yeah, the lights are going. Huh, looks like there's a problem. Okay, Google. <laughs> What's 5 times 32 divided by 2? The answer is 80. Okay, a little quicker that time, so it had okay. a bit of trouble yeah. connecting. What about some, like, let's throw a dot 5 in there. Uh, Alexa? What's 5 times 32.5 divided by 2? The answer to your calculation is 81.25. Notice again, I'm just talking to it. Like, I'm not having to, like the old yeah. days where yeah. voice recognition didn't work very yes. well. Yes. Yeah, yeah, now yeah. it's like I'm just talking to it as normal. Mm -hmm. Okay, Google, what is uh, 5 times 32.5 divided by 2? The answer is 81.25. Okay. Huh? So right. pretty quick to, to answer, so yeah. that's good. Um, Alexa? How much does an Amazon dot cost? Echo dot, second generation, black. It's $19.99 on Amazon, after $20 in savings. If you'd like to hear details, just Cancel. ask. So, I don't want to give you the price, because the price around the world is different, and, right. and so on. We're here in mm -hmm. Canada, it's much different. But I want to show... Okay, well obviously we expect the Amazon device to be good at telling us those kinds of things, but we can also say, okay, Google, how much is an Amazon dot? Notice I've said it wrong. On the website techradar.com, they say, the Amazon Echo Dot third generation is available now for £49.99 per $49.99 per $79. Yeah, I think that was different currencies. Yes. Amazon's giving me a discount. Yeah, I noticed that. Ah, you notice that? Yes. It's giving me a better price. So both of them answered the question. Yep. Alexa, find a Starbucks near me. I found a Starbucks. It's 1.5 miles away on Young Street in Barrie. It's miles. currently closed, but will be open tomorrow in from miles. 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Okay, they're closed, so that doesn't help me. Okay, Google, uh, find a Starbucks near me. I found a few places within 6.9 kilometers. The first one is Starbucks at 389 Young Street, Barrie. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. The second one is Starbucks at 179 Live 8 Way, Barrie. The third one is Starbucks at 76 Barrie View Drive, Barrie. Okay, so they both did great on that. They yeah. I will um, say the fact that it mentioned kilometers is yes. interesting compared to miles reference. Isn't that interesting? So, um, yes. so then I have to graphic say, issue. So I have to say, Alexa, how long will it take me to get to Starbucks? I found a Starbucks. It's 1.5 miles Same away on Young result, Street in Barrie. But Based on current traffic, it'll take about six minutes to drive there. Okay. Okay. So it, it matters how you ask the question. Okay, Google, how long will it take me to get to Starbucks? The closest Starbucks is at 620 Young Street, Barry. on. It will take you three minutes to get there by car in current traffic. I've sent the directions to your phone. That's... This That's is a reminder. Oh. There are some make reminders. Coffee. Okay. Amazon just told me make coffee. Mm -hmm. There's a reminder. But the Echo did not. The Echo did. Sorry. Hey, yeah. This the, is a reminder. Make coffee. Alexa, thank you. Um, no worries. The, <laughs> the, uh, the Google device didn't tell me what the reminder was. No. That's discreet. Okay, Google. Yes. What's the reminder? Hi. You have two reminders. If you'd like to hear the details, you can give me permission in the Google Home app. Oh. Look for personal okay. results under the settings for this device. They're being very careful Otherwise, about permission. Otherwise, you can see the details privacy. on your phone. To get these notifications okay, on an iPhone. Cancel. Okay, so I can't really judge that because maybe they're protecting my privacy. But at the same time, I've already activated the device on my right. account. I've given it the authorization to use. Mm -hmm. And I asked for the command on the device so right. i would say that that's a fail ah. i would agree with so that. i would say alexa won that one thank you alexa she's so confused now because i said the name alexa cancel 
<laughs> All right, so let's try a couple of more. Uh, okay, both told me how long it's going to take to Starbucks, even though Google races. Yes. <laughs> okay, Google, sing me a song. I like the fun stuff that it'll do for Finally the kids. Is here. I've been waiting for this chance. Okay, Google, cancel. Cool that AI can sing. Alexa, sing me a song. The tents go up, the sun goes down. Campfire she sounds up, so legit. We we watch the Alexa, fire. cancel. I have no idea whether it's royalty free or not. Both of you win. Okay, um, how in the world do they take the speech software and make it melodic? Melodyne? Autotune? Isn't that amazing? Wow. You think about uh, Shmo Yoho and Autotune the News and how they take the, the, the spoken word and wow. turn it into music. It's incredible huh. technology. They can do that. Um, okay, so next up, let's try shopping. So we're going to go shopping. Let's add something to our list. Okay. Cookies okay? Yes. You want to give it a try? Ask the Google device. Okay, Google, add cookies to my shopping list. Okay, I've added cookies to your shopping list. Okay, well, I already bought cookies, so get it off your list. Oh. Okay, Google, remove co cookies from my shopping list. Unfortunately, I can't remove items from your shopping list yet. To manage your list, mm. please use the shopping list in the Google oh. Home app. So I have to actually go into the app. Okay. In order to remove something from my list? Okay, Jeff, hmm. try to order, uh, add to my, my shopping list on the Alexa device. Okay. Alexa, can you add eggnog to my shopping list? I've added eggnog to your shopping list. Okay, no, I, I, I have lots of eggnog at home. Can you? You can that, never have enough eggnog. Take that off your list. Alexa, can you take eggnog off my shopping list? I've checked off eggnog from your shopping list. Okay, Alexa will do it. Google will not. Alexa, cancel. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Final test is to do with temperature. So I want to know, okay, Google, what's the temperature outside? The current temperature in Barrie is minus two. Okay. Okay, Google, what's the temperature inside? It's currently 24 degrees. This is Celsius. Don't you worry. Uh, Alexa, what's the temperature outside? Right now. It's minus one degrees. Tonight, expect a low oh, of minus three degrees. More details. Alexa, what's the temperature inside? Inside, it's 24. Okay. That's warm. So It is nice in here, eh? Becca likes it toasty. Um, oh, so it's that's so. actually communicating <laughs> through my account with my Nest device oh, in the house. It's, n it's warm in here, too. It's comfortable here. Okay, because yeah. there's it's like 24. I'm going, there's no way this is 24. This is 24. <laughs> <laughs> no. But is it colder than 24? I would say it's... Wow, we digress easily, don't we? <laughs> it's like 21 in here, Max. So opinions oh, of nice. these devices... I'd love to hear from you. Comment below. Uh, I hope that this has been a little bit unveiling for you which one is going to be best. Now, what is my personal opinion? Mm -hmm. I thought I was going to really, and even the first day, I thought I was going to lean toward the Google device. Um, it seemed very responsive. It does a really good job of interpreting my questions, uh, whereas the... Uh, the Amazon device would, um, would tend to stumble over some of my questions more often. But as I'm learning how to ask those questions, I'm finding that the sound quality of the Amazon device is actually really making me lean that way. Um, the other thing um, that I do is I, I take my devices all over the place. Mm -hmm. okay. So I took both of these devices, as I mentioned, from home, having used them at home, to work. Okay. Having taken it to work, the Amazon Echo Dot um, in the app, I can change the Wi-Fi connectivity so that it accesses the Wi-Fi at work. Right. The Google Home Mini, on the other hand, having brought it from home to, um, to work, it wouldn't allow me to connect. It said that I'm not on the same Wi-Fi network. So I looked into it, and I actually have to remove the device completely and reactivate it if I want oh. to activate oh it on gosh, the Wi-Fi network. It's uh, unbelievable. So, but a workaround to that is at home. So I took it home that night. And at home, I can delete the Wi-Fi network. Then, the next day, I took it to work, and I added the Wi-Fi network at work. So now it's able to connect at work. But then before I leave work, I have to remember, delete the Wi-Fi network. Otherwise, I will not be able to connect at home. 
That's not good. That's annoying. The Amazon device, however, I brought that home then, having set it up at work, and it automatically now connected to my home network. So it remembered the settings for both networks, just like my phone does, right. and mm -hmm. was able to connect anywhere I went. And then I brought it to the studio, and I went through the same headache, where the Google device, I had to first delete the network in order to be able to connect it here at the studio. Um, and the Amazon device, I was able to just add another Wi-Fi network and connect it, and it was right. no problem. So those are some thoughts to mm. ponder. I found the Amazon device to be e more user-friendly, but both do a very good job. And as you know, they both control my lights. They both do all that kind of yeah. stuff. And keep in mind, this is a different device. So the ability to control devices, that's a separate device. Right. I'll put a link for you below, uh, and you can, you can check that out as well. They're not expensive, but you can get all these smart home devices. Mm -hmm. so, so post your opinions. We'd appreciate that. Now, with it being connected to your Wi-Fi, and maybe yes. you don't have the answer to this, could you set it up... like? Will the devices read what's being transmitted through your network? For instance, I'm thinking you've got NEMS. Mm -hmm. Could you create some sort of a report within NEMS that is automatically to be pulled from the devices so you could say, mm. you know, hey... What is being asked of the device? Yeah, like you could say, That's can you give apps. me a network report yeah. within NEMS? And it goes, oh... Well, um, if like, there's a skill, that? Yeah. like mm -hmm. Amazon calls it skills. Um, I'm not sure about Google, how they work it. Similar kind of thing. Okay. You activate it like a, like an app. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, the kids activated the fart skill. <laughs> so Alexa, and they figured it out. Alexa, sorry. Cancel. Yeah. <laughs> Alexa cancel. Yeah. Um, so these are skills that you add. So if I created, so being the developer of NEMS, the, to answer the question flat out, if I created a, a, a skill and uploaded it to Amazon's store, then you could request that skill. I am working on one for Category 5. That's okay. it, ultimately why I got these two devices, is so oh, that I can okay. develop these, um, these skills for these devices, so you can listen to our podcasts and things like that right. on these devices. Um, so yes, if they exist. Okay. Does that help? It's amazing it that a fart is a skill. Apparently it is. I'm putting Apparently that on my is. resume. And <laughs> Alexa does it better. I got skills. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so do we have time to talk about privacy? Or are we out of time? Well, what do you want to know? Like, I, I can't bring myself to purchase one of these. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like, if I was to go buy one, you're afraid of Big Brother. Well, not only that, I'm just afraid of my data collection. Okay. Like, uh, if I was to buy one, 100%, I, I would go with Amazon Echo. Mm -hmm. um, just based on today alone, like, I'm sold. That, that's where right. I would go. But I don't like the idea of it listening all the time. Even, like, it could sit there all day, and I could never say her name. But it's right. going to listen the whole time. But you do I get used like to that. you get used to walking in the room and saying, "Alexa, play the Fat Rat." Shuffling songs by the Fat Rat oh, and on Amazon on. Music. And you reach out, and now, Alexa, 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 Alexa. You do get used to that, especially when you got kids running around and they're. It doesn't mean like it's not room. listening. It is not listening. But I'm still not convinced. Alexa, stop the music. The fact that if you don't think about it, that's, that's what I struggle with. Like, I don't activate the, the voice uh, um, controls for my phone. I, I refuse to do it because I don't like the idea of it always listening to me. So, so mute it. What is mute the, the microphone. But what is the privacy protections on these? Like, because I know, like, you hear stories where, uh, and I, I want to say it was covered, uh, not necessarily in the news for us, but in, about a month ago, there was somebody, there was a home invasion, and the person didn't activate their device, but it still heard the distress and called the police. Well, before the show, you were telling that story, and you said its yeah. name, call the police, <laughs> and, and it started dialing, and I had to halt it. Yes. Uh, because if you... If you state it then yeah it will it, it, it's will. Can, it will do that you have to be Absolutely. careful with your words and so for it sure. can be very yeah. helpful it can be very very helpful mm -hmm. in a case like that sure it can which is wonderful but i it's just it's i don't know there's something in me i'm like i just can't do it i'm it's the fact that everything is being listened to i just i can't i can't mentally get my but head there until you say the keyword there's not there's no transaction happening and the transaction is what I say after the keyword. 
But it's not about the transaction. It's the fact that it's right now it's still listening because it's waiting for the name to be called. But what's it doing with that data? It's not. That's the question. And that's exactly why, Jeff, that these devices, you can't change their name to Bob. Alexa, change your name to Bob. Sorry, I can only help change the wake word to one of these. Amazon, computer, or Echo. Three options, okay? Because in its very, very finite system that is built into this, because you're thinking that the cloud is always listening to you. No, the device is listening for those three keywords. So it is here in my network waiting for those keywords. As soon as I activate it with the keyword, now the cloud is activated and waiting for my command. So when right. I ask for the weather forecast, that request goes out to the cloud and is translated and then sent back instantaneously. I still don't buy it. And maybe I'm just being skeptical. You're, you're skeptical, afraid of technology in the future and possibly a little conspiracy s theorist. Oh, sure. 100%. I, I know that I have conspiracy theory tendencies, but it's the fact that it's always listening. It may not be accessing the cloud, but it's always listening, and I just can't help but wonder. Now it's not listening. Alexa, yeah. Alexa, 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 Alexa. That's why I love that it does have that button, because I do have that privacy feature. And when I'm not using it, because I'm not always using it, you don't have to leave it on all the time, Jeff. Still not when I'm not using it, well, if you are really that bad, unplug the power. <laughs> Come on That's now. That's true. I agree. <laughs> Alexa. <laughs> Alexa. <laughs> for goodness sake, Jeff. I know. I, I'm sure there's people <sighs> who are watching this that are just like, why is this guy on a tech show? Give okay, him a Google. field with plants. I... Take out Jeff. Edit him out. <laughs> 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 Let me know your opinions. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. If, you. if you have similar concerns to Jeff, hey, post them below, and maybe some of the community can react and respond to that. I have a very different mindset in that I, um, I, I do trust the encryption that is there, and mm -hmm. I do believe that the information that uh, you know, I'm, I'm asking for the weather, I don't really... I'm surfing the web. I'm going on the web to get my weather. It's no different than asking it this way. It's just a different interface. You had it's me a very at, different yeah, interface. You had me at, like, set the reminders. I feel like that's what I need <laughs> in my life. And, uh, and Amazon's device won that one big yeah. time. I love that it just, hey, time to make coffee. Yeah, I love I like it. That. I like it. Let oh us know God. your thoughts, everybody. Uh, comment below. Um, make sure you give us a like and a thumbs up and a subscribe if you, uh, if you appreciated this uh, this hopefully unbiased uh, comparison. Um, links are below. Um, again, we are a partner with Amazon, so you're welcome to use our link. We'd appreciate that. I've also got a link to that device that I use to turn on and off the light. Uh, and we've got a link to the Google um, Home Mini as well, although they're not a partner, so we don't get a cut of that. Right. So don't buy it. <laughs> Only buy these ones. <laughs> totally kidding. You make up your own mind, all right? Sasha. Yes. We're going to head right over to the newsroom. Let are you ready for it? Certainly am. Awesome. Here are the stories we're covering this week in the Category 5.TV newsroom. Google's parent company, Alphabet, will test its drone delivery service in Finland next year. Microsoft Edge is dead, seriously. Microsoft is building its own Chromium browser to replace the default on Windows 10. Google is expediting the closure of Google Plus after another security bug. For the second time in history, a human-made object has reached the space between the stars. These stories are coming right up. Don't go anywhere. This is the Category 5.TV Newsroom, covering the week's top tech stories with a slight Linux bias. Jeff Weston. Yeah, man. You're building a brand new beautiful website. What? Aren't you? No. Am I? Oh, you're a terrible actor. What? This is where acting comes into play. Oh, I didn't know we were acting. You're supposed to act. Okay, fair enough. All right. yeah, I'm building a really cool website. Are you building a really cool website? Just because Jeff is confused doesn't mean you have to be. Visit cat5.tv slash dreamhost to sign up for unlimited web hosting for your website with unlimited email accounts, MySQL databases, the latest version of PHP, WordPress, and more, and even a free domain name registration. It's less than $6 per month, so sign up today. cat5.tv slash dreamhost. I'm Sasha Rickman, and here are the top stories we're following this week. Google's parent company, Alphabet, will test its drone delivery service in Finland next year. 
Helsinki will be the first European location for Wing, which has been testing drones in Australia. Its aircraft will deliver packages weighing up to 1.5 kilograms within a minute of, being, of an order being placed. Several companies, including Wing and Amazon, are developing drone delivery services, but they have spent years in development without launching. In December 2013, Amazon chief executive Jeff Bezos predicted his company's prime air delivery service would launch within five years. However, its service is still in development. Wing said its drones had made 55,000 journeys in Australia, delivering items such as medicine, coffee, and household goods. It said it had chosen Finland for its European trial because Finnish people were renowned for being early adopters of new technologies. It has invited them to share what products they would like to see delivered by drone with suggestions including breakfast, lunch, painkillers, and household essentials. Customers will be able to place an order using a smartphone app and the drone delivery will be offered free of charge during the trial period. For drone delivery services to be viable, the technology giants must show that their drones are safe and reliable. Critics also question whether the public will want noisy drones delivering goods in towns and cities. But Wing says drone delivery is safer, faster, and more environmentally friendly than ground delivery. Wing is part of Alphabet's Other Bets division, which includes self driving car project Waymo and internet delivery balloon maker Loon. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, Wing. Interesting. I like it. I love the concept of being able to get something that quickly. Yeah, within one、It's、minute of ordering. It's a precedent that we're setting.、Uh, you can't cancel an order then. <laughs> well, okay, yeah. so that was my first thought. I'm like, a minute? Yeah. Like, so it goes in, the order goes in. Is it somebody on the other end that's going, quick, run、yeah, down the go, hallway, go, 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 go. get it? Like, not, you've not got four Amazon、seconds. workers. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's just ridiculous. One minute. Too intense. I, I would say, you know, you know, within like half an hour of your order being processed, like, what happens if. There's an error. You're right, you can't return sure, it. Sure. But、uh, what I can't help but wonder, though, is does this open the door to you know, some guy sitting on his porch going, looks like a nice package? Take down the device. It's like,、Absolutely. I'm stealing that. Yep, GPS like, is going to help with that, though. Yeah, well, yeah that's it true. It will.、Yeah. I mean, you'll see it come down. And the Amazon drones are armed, <laughs> <laughs> they're loaded with missiles. <laughs> So, <laughs> I love、yeah. this. I wish that we were testing it here. Well, we should be testing it here because we have interesting weather. I was going to say, could, probably couldn't handle Canadian weather. Not if I, they're battery operated. That's I would、sure. like for it to be able to handle it. And I would like to be able to order something and have it delivered within one minute. Like the time that no, my no, printer ran out of. Takes off、out. within a minute. Yes.、Yeah. So、it'll only take a few But、minutes. it'll only take a few minutes. I ran out of toner the other day and had to drive across town because. My、oh, project、wow. was due. And、okay. town is big when yeah, you're yeah. panicking and it's close to six and everything's closing. But had I known a drone was just going to deliver it, that would be fantastic. You're excited about toner. I'm excited about breakfast, lunch, and painkillers. <laughs> That's the part. Okay. The three Where's things dinner? That I need in my day. Come on, guys. No, the painkillers are mine. Lunch. All. So you're done at four o'clock. <laughs> you're out. Breakfast, lunch, and <laughs> painkillers. It would be, I know they talked about household items, but it would be interesting to see how they get into things like、uh, controlled substances. Like, would they open the door and say, hey, you want to buy your alcohol? You know, you can purchase it through us and we're going to drone delivery. Where's the social responsibility in that? Like, there's, there's placed on the person purchasing. Right, but. Do you think that'll happen, though?、Uh, we'll see. Maybe, I mean, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. It's baby steps. But, th- but there's a lot、somewhere. of things that come with it where it's like, how are you going to handle the control issue? Of you know, age restricted products. So, d- does Amazon have to start being that bartender who says, Look, guy, we're cutting you off. This is the sixth beer delivery we've given you tonight. Right.、I'm、cutting you off. Yeah, it's just,、uh, it's interesting. I, yeah. It'll be, a, yeah, it'll be neat to see how it <laughs> develops. For sure. I would like it here already. So, Finnish people, stay. Finish up your experiment and send it on over. <laughs> Live up to your name. That's、Finish、right. It up. Send it over to Canada. <laughs>
Microsoft Edge is dead. Seriously, Microsoft is building its own Chromium browser to replace the default on Windows 10. The software giant first introduced its Edge browser three years ago with a redesign to replace Internet Explorer and modernize the default browsing experience to compete with Chrome and others. While the modern look and feel has paid off for Edge, the underlying browser engine, Edge HTML, has struggled to keep up with Chromium. Microsoft is finally giving up and moving its default Windows 10 browser to Chromium. Apparently, there has been a growing frustration inside Microsoft thanks to Edge, Edge's web compatibility issues and businesses and customers have been pushing the company to improve things. Chrome is now the most popular browser across all devices, thanks to Android's popularity and the rise of Chrome on PCs and Macs. Web developers have been favoring its rendering engine to optimize their sites. Google has been creating Chrome-only web services simply because it's often the first to adopt emerging web technologies as its engineers contribute to many web standards. Microsoft's rendering engine has fallen behind as a result and the company is finally ready to admit this. There were signs Microsoft was about to adopt Chromium onto Windows as the company's engineers have been working with Google to support a version of Chrome on an ARM-powered Windows operating system. Adopting Chromium as the default rendering engine for Windows 10 will end Microsoft's hostility towards Chrome. Microsoft has regularly pushed notifications to Windows 10 users to attempt to convince them not to use Chrome and Microsoft pulled Google Chrome's installer from the Windows Store because it apparently violated store policies. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. They've been saying, to, so if you try to install Chrome, Edge yeah. will warn you, are you sure you want to do this? Because Edge is so much better. Huh. <laughs> Hopefully nobody ever fell for that. But now, how oh, do yes they say, they oh, well, uh, we're actually going to switch to uh -huh. Chrome. Yeah, the message should be, <laughs> Are you sure you want to install this? Because Chrome is better. Right. <laughs> well, Chrome is better. I believe in choice. Just don't, yeah, just like, here's the facts. Hey, the user wants to install Chrome. But uh, that aside, so we had the discussion last week about how Microsoft is so dead set in their old ways. Yes. Mm -hmm. And think that, hey, if we force users to use Edge, they will use Edge. Well, then the user said, you know what? No, we're not using Edge. Give me a break. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, it was a lousy browser to begin with. Oh, and horrible. And doesn't support add-ons or anything. Um, and you, you want us to use this? No. Yeah. Right. If my choice was between Chrome and Edge, I would always pick Chrome. Always. Always. 100% of the time. Always. There's never a time where I'd be like, ooh, Edge has the edge on this one. Mm. Never. Never, ever would never I ever say that. Mind. Never. So finally, they've given up and said, okay, well, we're going to base, I don't know if it's still going to be called Edge or what, but it's going to be Chrome at its heart because Chromium is the open source project that powers mm -hmm. Chrome and is now going to power Microsoft's default browser as well. Will they call it Chromium or Chrome? What I do I don't find know. interesting, and this is like a very far offshoot, is the fact that, uh, was it not Microsoft that bought GitHub? Yeah. Which is all open source stuff. So it's interesting that they buy GitHub Mm -hmm. which is about open source. Now suddenly they're going to use Chromium as the base. It just makes me wonder if Microsoft has finally gone, okay, we need to release the reins, start doing some open source and see what people can do with our products. Become a support company. Yeah. And right. just, it'd be interesting to see if that's where they're going. And if so, what does that mean for the future of Microsoft? Mm -hmm. You know, are they going to open up, you know, Office Suite to be open source based? If they don't change their ways, then they will, I mean, I, I, I hate be to say it because it sounds presumptuous and it sounds prophetic in a way, but They'll they will found. go down. They'll be found only in past episodes. Wasn't it Jeff, <laughs> it's Jeff Bezos this week who just said he's been saying for years that Amazon will not last forever. It's going to go down because he said there's about a 30 year shelf life on all major companies. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Microsoft is at that. They're past it. Well, they're, they're, and they're still holding on to old paradigms, and they right. need to get out of that. And yeah. they're trying. I mean, I have to give them that. They're switching now from Edge to Chromium. But yeah. again, they're making big mistakes with regards to everything that they do. Windows 10 is yeah. the last version yeah. of Windows. 
we're just going to update it. And every single update for the past four months has, has been absolutely nightmare. Yes. <laughs> so people are losing faith in the very OS and people are saying now we need Windows 11. Well, no, Windows 10 is the last Windows. They need to just get over themselves and move on mm -hmm. is what they need to do. And maybe that's what they're doing with Chrome. They need to just go back to Longhorn. No. <laughs> No, Jim. That was failure. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. Google is expediting the closure of Google Plus after yet another security bug. We knew Google Plus was shutting down, but Google has announced that they are expediting this process since a new security bug was discovered with the Google Plus API. 52.5 million users in connection with the Google Plus API potentially had their name, email address, occupation, age, and other information stolen in this latest breach. Google is moving up the closure of the consumer Google Plus to April 2019 and closing down all the Google Plus APIs in the next 90 days. Google says we want to give users ample opportunity to transition off consumer Google Plus and over the coming months we will continue to provide users with additional information including ways they can safely and secure, securely download the, and migrate their data. Yet another Google service to add to the graveyard. Check out killedbygoogle.com for the full list. We knew it was coming. I knew when I signed up for Google Plus that it was going to fail. Really? A miserable platform. Just like yeah. that. Miserable platform. I don't know that I. I don't know that I signed up for it. I, uh, I found as soon as I signed up for it, it was not valid for what I would want. Yeah. It was very. It was obsolete from the get-go because there was just nothing to make it community-based. It felt very circles, Jeff. Wait, circles. this is yeah. the circle. I did have it. Yeah. I did have Google you Plus. Were in our circle. I yeah. was in a circle. I did have it. Like I it. did have yeah. it. I, f I think it was a failed attempt at kind of like creating a new type of Facebook. And yeah, it, social it media and yeah, everything else. Yeah. Um, I kind of feel like this is this has been hyped a lot. Yeah. Like sure. Google Plus shutting down has been in the media, and we're reporting on it as well. Mm -hmm. um, but it kind of feels like Google is just they're trying to get rid of it. They're trying yes. to, and so the, there have been theories and maybe conspiracy theories, but folks who think that Google is just creating these exploits. Oh, that's hilarious. That's to, a great theory. So that people lose confidence in the platform that they already don't have confidence in, because who's going to care? Just the people who have their data on it. Like three oh, people. Oh, well, I've got to get my stuff off. Three people Everybody else in the world is like, who cares if Google Plus has been compromised? I, so they know that, and so they create this fake... Hey, we've been hacked again. Ooh. We'll do this to save All your you. Your data is gone. Yeah. See, Ooh. I don't. I mean, I like to have faith in a company that they wouldn't build their brand off insecure products. No, but they, they are big enough. Google, Alphabet are big enough that they can just. They, they want to brush this one off. They want this one gone. They want to get rid of it. So they could theoretically do something like that. They could say that it there was hurt a them breach any, because that there wasn't. Yeah. Who cares about that breach? Yeah, I guess. Nobody cares about that breach except the people who have their data huh. on it who now have been given an opportunity, which, 90 days of which, to get I their stuff hear from off. It actually does garner like, a lot of consumer confidence. Like, oh, they're reporting on their own thing and shutting it down? I like them. Yeah. You're not going to fix it because it's a dead thing. Yes. We're not going to put any work into it. We're not going to dedicate man hours to that. We're just going to like... So they've got marketing people creating so false hack exploits. It's akin to like saying I want a new microwave so I'm just going to throw this tin foil in the microwave and hit five minutes. Mm -hmm. It's like Sasha throwing her things on the floor to get warranty replacements. That was not on purpose uh, and I can't even call them. Uh, I'm so I feel so bad. It was me. I did it. Oh, I can't get it replaced uh, by warranty but you can send me a new one because I liked it so much. Kay. Don't go too, too far down this rabbit hole. Because then you'll reveal who we're talking about. Yes. Nobody knows. It's completely inside. <laughs> completely inside. <laughs> For the second time in history, a human-made object has reached the space between the stars. NASA's Voyager 2 probe now has exited the heliosphere, the protective bubble of particles and magnetic fields created by the sun.
Comparing data from different instruments aboard the trailblazing spacecraft, mission scientists determined the probe crossed the outer edge of the heliosphere on November 5th. This boundary, called the heliopause, is where the tenuous hot solar wind meets the cold, dense interstellar medium. Its twin, Voyager 1, crossed this boundary in 2012, but Voyager 2 carries a working instrument that will provide first-of-its-kind observations of the nature of this gateway into the interstellar space. Voyager 2 now is slightly more than 11 billion miles from Earth. Mission operators can still communicate with Voyager 2 as it enters this new phase of its journey, but the information, moving at the speed of light, takes about 16.5 hours to travel from the spacecraft to Earth. By comparison, light traveling from the Sun takes about 8 minutes to reach Earth. Together, the two Voyagers provide a detailed glimpse of how our heliosphere interacts with the constant interstellar wind flowing from beyond. Their observations complement data from NASA's Interstellar Boundary Explorer, or IBEX, a mission that is remotely sensing that boundary. NASA also is preparing an additional mission, the upcoming Interstellar Mapping and Acceleration Probe, or IMAP, due to launch in 2024 to capitalize on the Voyager's observations. While the probes have left the heliosphere, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 have not yet left the solar system and won't be leaving anytime soon. The boundary of the solar system is considered to be beyond the outer edge of the Oort cloud, a collection of small objects that are still under the influence of the sun's gravity. The width of the Oort cloud is not known precisely, but is estimated to begin at about 1,000 astronomical units, or AU, from the Sun and to extend to about 100,000 AU. 1 AU is the distance from the Sun to the Earth. It will take about 300 years for Voyager 2 to reach the inner edge of the Oort cloud and possibly 30,000 years to fly beyond it. Voyager 2 launched in 1977, 16 days before Voyager 1, and both have traveled well beyond their their original destinations. The spacecrafts were built to last five years and conduct close-up studies of Jupiter and Saturn. However, as the mission continued, additional flybys of the two outermost giant planets, Uranus and Neptune, pr proved possible. As the spacecraft flew across the solar system, remote control reprogramming was used to endow the Voyagers with greater capabilities than they possessed when they left Earth. Their two-planet mission became a four-planet mission. Their five-year lifespans have stretched to 41 years, making Voyager 2 NASA's longest-running mission. Unbelievable. This I, is a wild. This yeah. is great. This is, we, they definitely did not picture this when they put the spacecraft up into the atmosphere, right? And here it is, 41 years later, blowing our minds. Unreal. Once it, once it reaches the Oort cloud, uh, that could happen. I can't see it ever going through, but if it gets there, we're going to start to see... I, I hope. Do we Wait. get to see pictures? No. Does Voyager take know. pictures? Uh, it's going to be data. It's going to be I data. I think it's data. But, but that's what I find so fascinating about this is that it was a five-year mission. It's now 40-plus years into it. The technology that's on Voyager 1 and 2 and the data that's being transmitted is so archaic mm -hmm. to what we use today, but it's still mm -hmm. sending information. We're like, oh, this is amazing. Oh, I wish yeah. they had digital CMOS sensors back then. Oh, yeah. Like, could you... Like, imagine the information we would collect now if we were mm -hmm. able to... But it's just, it's neat that we're going, oh, we're still receiving the information 16 hours later. It's like, sure. oh, I'm on. But I will say, totally, uh, you know, just Hollywoodized. The fact that it's still going and you've got those Star Trek movies, you know, mm -hmm. V'ger. Uh, which one was that? Uh, was that Star Trek Four? With I haven't where seen they found the, the, the original series stuff. The original, oh, it was so good. But it just it makes me wonder: one day, if we get there, are we gonna find these satellites crashed somewhere? It's mm. like, oh my goodness, that's it. That's how far it got from home. Now it's coming back to me, Jeff. I'm sure I saw that. That's where the guy I'm like sure I saw that. I forget his yeah. name, but he's he like melds with the Spock. No, I don't know. I forget. Sarek? It's a crewman. I forget his name. Oh, okay. It's I don't been know. Years since I've seen that. Yeah. One. Wow, still, it's so cool. In, in reality, though, yeah, I mean, away from sci-fi and, and <laughs> videos of the the era, like this is sensing data that is further away from Earth yeah. than anything has ever been. Mm -hmm. And I think 
you know, will the technology come that we can then surpass it? Like, will, sure. will we send a probe that flies well past Voyager 2 and says, see ya, I've yeah. got 16 megapixels in an array of 500 sensors, Buttons. and uh, I'm going to be taking some pictures of this Earth cloud. So yeah, it would be neat this day will come. they could create another satellite to hit the trajectory path and go, we're going to, like, here's a robotic whatever that's going to install other sensors on you and... You know, we're Take pictures of it. Yeah, maybe mm. rub some of the the zebra muscles off. It's something that like it's that. It'd, up along it'd be the interesting way. to see if we have. You know, we <laughs> could have the technology. It's like we're gonna we're gonna update you on the fly. You know, it's like a refuel in in air. Just shoot it down. <laughs> Just replace it all together. <laughs> it's been up there for a long time. Can you imagine having a five year lifespan? And then being like extended to forty-one years. Yeah. The, the poor Voyager two is probably like, when can I retire? How's the anti-malware <laughs> on there? <laughs> Think about that. Right. How hackable is this device? <laughs> yeah, it's up there with technology from the sixties. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. It's still a very cool story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Big thanks to Roy W. Nash and our community of viewers for submitting stories to us this week. Thanks for watching the Category Five TV newsroom. Don't forget to like and subscribe for all your tech news with a slight Linux bias. And for more free content, be sure to check out our website. From the Category 5.tv newsroom, I'm Sasha Rickman. And I'm Robbie Ferguson. And I'm Jeff Weston. Thank you once again for being here with us this week, folks. I hope you've had a great time. I sure have, and I look forward to being here with you again next week. So we'll see you. Bye. Bye.